I'm going to talk about the seven things I wish I knew before doing a Catalina Island day trip. Oh, hi, Mark. What's up, Fachero fam? Welcome back to my channel where I'd like to explore everything that life has to offer. And I've done a bunch of videos about Catalina Island. And some of the most popular comments and questions I get regarding Catalina Island are about doing a Catalina Island day trip. And as you can imagine, like anything in life, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. So in this video, I'm gonna give you my seven best pro tips when going to Catalina Island for the day. Number one, go during the week. Now, if you're going to Catalina Island just for the day, as you can imagine, if you go during the week, there's a lot less traffic. It's easier to get the tickets for certain things, to do activities, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I do know for a lot of people, they go typically on the weekend because like say, if you have a nine to five job, Monday through Friday, it's of course easier with your work schedule to go on the weekend. But if you can, I do suggest going during the week. It's a lot easier to experience everything on the island. Number two, the Catalina Express. Now I've already done a video. I'll post it in the description below talking about all the things I wish I knew before taking the Catalina Express, but I will give a couple pro tips, especially related to doing a day trip. Now, first off, in terms of the prices, you're looking at about 40-ish dollars one way, so basically $80 round trip. And remember, you also have to pay for parking. You're looking at about 20-ish dollars. So in terms of the logistics, so to speak, you're looking at about spending roughly 100 ish dollars to get to the island basically between 100 and 110. i think this is why doing a day trip is so popular because if you think about it if let's say you want to do a mini vacation so to speak for only a hundred dollars in terms of transportation and everything not too bad another thing is make sure you book round trip tickets do not do the thing where you just book one way and you're like all right we'll book it later or whatever if you're only there for the day and i know this is kind of like captain obvious but if you're only there for the day the last thing you're going to do is be stranded because it sells out and the catalina express does sell out so keep that in mind book your round trip ticket right away now in terms of the timing the first ferry usually leaves around 6 ish a.m. and the ferry leaving the island leaves around 7 ish p.m. and the ferry ride is roughly about an hour so if you think about it if you leave let's say at six in the morning you take the first one you'll get to the island around 7 a.m. you'll leave around 7 p.m. so you have about 12 ish hours to spend on the island number three backpacks not lockers I wanted to bring this up because a lot of times when people do a day trip, one big pro tip is to use the lockers on the island. However, I suggest not to do this. I think the lockers are good. If let's say you're staying overnight and you need a place to put your stuff because the hotel won't hold your stuff, the lockers are convenient. In case you didn't know them, they're only a couple bucks. You do have to have cash on you. You basically bring the cash to the cashier section. They give you dollar coins and that's how you open up the lockers. When it comes to a day trip, however, I do think it's best to avoid these for a couple different reasons. One, every single time you open up that locker, you have to repay it. Again, it's not that expensive, but it's more of the hassle behind that. The second thing is the lockers can be a decent walk depending on where you are. For example, let's say you go to Descanso Beach Club and you forget sunscreen and you put yourself in a locker, well, the walk from Descanso Beach Club to the lockers is roughly about a mile. So you're looking at about a two mile round trip walk to go from Descanso Beach Club to the lockers and back. This is why I do suggest if you're going just for the day, bring everything you have in a single backpack. That way, regardless of where you are on the island, you have everything you need. Number four, stores. In case you didn't know, there is one Vons on the island and it's your typical grocery store. And there is a liquor store as well on the island. And when it comes to both these places, they pretty much have everything you need. And I'm not gonna lie to you, the prices are comparable to pretty much anywhere else. So let's say you do get to the island and you want to make a sandwich, for example, because you're trying to do this on a budget, you're just there for the day, you can easily buy bread, peanut butter, jelly, whatever you want to do at the Vons on the island. Now, one thing I do have to stress, and this is very important, I talked about this Vons or the grocery store in a previous video about Catalina Island. And I did have a few locals reach out to me saying, hey Mark, I love the video, but I do want to let your subscribers know one important thing. If the Vons runs out of something, we cannot buy it until they get it back in stock. So for example, if let's say the Vons runs out of peanut butter, that's it. People who live on the island cannot buy peanut butter until they get 
another shipment. So I do suggest, especially to be respectful of the locals and people living on the island, bring everything you can. Pre-plan as much as you can before getting to the island. But like I said, let's say you do get to the island and for whatever reason you forgot peanut butter, you forgot this one item or that item, there is a grocery store and a liquor store on the island. Number five, public amenities. Of course, if you're going for just the day, you don't have a hotel room or anywhere you can really stay, so to speak. However, at Descanso Beach Club, there are showers and bathrooms right there that you can use for free. So let's say you wanna go for the day, let's say go on the beach, read a book, have some drinks, go in the water or whatever, there are showers and bathrooms available that are free to use for the public. Number six, plan activities in advance. So there are a lot of different things to do on the island. Whether you wanna rent a golf cart, you wanna go zip lining, you wanna go jet skiing, et cetera, et cetera. A huge pro tip I have, again, this may seem like Captain Obvious, but it's important. These activities can very quickly sell out if like, so you're going for a couple days, and this has happened to me before, where I went to, like say, do jet skiing, and they're like, hey, sorry, today's kind of filled up, we have an opening tomorrow. I was like, oh, no big deal, I'll go tomorrow. But as you can imagine, if you're only there for the day, one, things can very easily sell out, so you won't be able to do them, but two, the last thing I'm gonna do as well is, like say, book too late of a time, and let's like, say it's cutting it close when it comes to the Catalina Express, the ferry will leave if you're not on it. So let's like, say if you book a super late time for an activity, it might cut it way too close to the Catalina Express. Some activities do sell out quicker than others, like jet skiing sells out pretty quick. Same thing with zip lining. However, when it comes to kayaking, you probably won't have an issue at all riding a kayak, being honest. But again, you never know. So I do suggest book any activities you wanna do in advance. Number seven, budgeting. I wanted to talk about this because when it comes to going to Catalina Island, I have had some people say, hey Mark, I wanna go, but I gotta save up money. I feel like it's gonna be too pricey, et cetera, et cetera. Being honest, going to Catalina Island can be one of the most inexpensive trips you can do, period, especially if you wanna have, like I said, like a mini vacation. I have said this before in other videos, but when I go to Catalina Island, I literally feel like I'm in a whole other country like Greece or Italy or something along those lines. And like I said earlier in the video, the Catalina Express, roughly about 80-ish dollars. The parking, roughly about 20-ish dollars. So if you think about it, for 100 to 110 dollars, you can feel like you're in a completely other country and you can have a mini vacation for the day. You can easily go to Descanso Beach Club or another beach, sit on the beach with a towel, relax, go in the water, grab a book, and everything completely for free. And I want to mention this because if you are on an extreme budget, just bring a bunch of food and drinks with you, bring everything to the island, and all you really need to buy if you're doing it on, like say, an extreme budget is Catalina Express tickets and the parking. That's it. Going to Catalina Island can be one of the most inexpensive vacations you can take. And now a bonus tip, and that is camping. Now I know this seems random being like, wait, camping? I'm, I'm going for the day. I find when I talk to people doing a day trip, it's mainly for two different reasons. One, for time. Let's say they're going on a Sunday because they have work the next day. They just want to have a Sunday fun day and go to the island. The second reason is for budgeting reasons. They're like, well, if I stay longer on the island, I have to get a hotel and hotels on Catalina Island can be pretty pricey, I'm gonna be honest. And of course, you're gonna spend more money so people go for the day for mainly budgeting reasons. However, camping is a great way to experience the island and of course, stay overnight. If like, say you wanna go and experience the nightlife, which I'll be honest, the nightlife on Catalina Island is very limited. Avalon, which is the main part of the island, is your typical island town, so things do close down pretty early. The only places I do suggest to go to, which close around 2 a.m., are the Marlin Club and the Chichi Club. Those are your main two spots, so to speak, when it comes to the nightlife. However, let's say if you wanna go out, let's say do a little day drinking, have some drinks, and you don't wanna drive back, and you do want to stay overnight, but you're trying to do it on a budget, camping is a great option. Camping at the Hermit Gulch Campground, for example, is only $73 for two people. That's roughly about $37 a person, which is roughly equal to two drinks at the Descanso Beach Club. So if you think about it, for only $37, like say if you're having two people with you, you can easily camp on the island. Now, camping on the island could be an entire video in itself, but I will give a couple pro tips because there are some pros and cons. As you can imagine, on one end, it's super inexpensive. It's a great way to stay overnight on the island. And in addition, I did camp at the Hermit Gulch campground before. It was super beautiful, super nice and relaxing. They have bathrooms and everything. On the other end, I think the biggest issue is you do have to bring your own stuff. So as you can imagine, lugging around, let's say a tent, 
pillows, a sleeping bag or whatever, even if it's not that heavy, it can still be a little bit annoying. Another thing is actually getting to the campground itself. The campgrounds are a decent distance from the island. I'd say roughly about 1.5 miles-ish, give or take. And although that's not insanely far, lugging your stuff or walking it all the way can be very, very exhausting. And in addition, the taxis can be very expensive. There are shuttles on the island that are very easy to take. They're only a couple bucks. So I do suggest doing that if you are gonna be camping. But I gotta be honest, if you're planning a Catalina Island day trip, mainly for budgeting reasons, look into camping. It's a very inexpensive way to stay overnight on the island.